my association started at your age, just came out of the college and joined ISRO. And I have seen ISRO taking, that time, you know, it was just taking the baby steps in space technology. We sent two small satellites to the Russian help, made one SLV uh, launch rocket. And, you know, that day, our achievements were less, but ambitions were very high. We were planning to make big communication satellites, remote sensing, and what not and all. And from that, I see after three decades, you know, ISRO has grown to be a uh, space agency to be reckoned with. You know, ISRO doesn't make just launches, satellites, or the sensors, but ISRO also brings out a number of applications. You look at on the screen, you know, that uh, we provide even the com satellite communication to the poorest of the poor, you know, which you can pay 1300 rupees subscription per year. And also, you see, you ask your parents, you know, in their time, in the 70s and 80s, you know, they would have seen a number of hurricanes and cyclones and which is to take away thousands of lives. Today you don't, you don't hear them, you know, you don't see them on newspapers. That doesn't mean the cyclones have stopped coming to India, but uh, we are observing it, predicting it, cautioning the people, and that is why we are saving lives. And you see, all you know the GPS, you know, that's a fantastic uh, uh, equipment where you get yourself the directions, but you will see very shortly IRNSS, 10 times more capable than GPS coming to you. It is already getting operational in the middle of the next year. And so on and so on. But if I look at ISRO, some other perspective, you know, we have brought out fantastic human beings. I will not call them leaders. You know, I will call them fantastic human beings. You know, I have come across Dr. Abdul Kalam, you know, a one a, a village boy and the son of a fisherman, a boatman from Nagarquel to coming all the way to occupying uh, President's Palace. And I have seen Professor Jaspal, in spite of all his laurels and all, I asked him, he, uh, when he retired, he said, how many times I have retired, he was telling. And that gentleman spent three years, you know, just to build programs to teach children through television media. And I have come across uh, Madhavan Nair, you know, who brought tele-education and telemedicine to the country. And he was a rocket specialist. And sometimes I wonder, you know, that uh, ISRO brings up fantastic gadgets, rockets and all, or ISRO brings up these such beautiful human beings, you know, who not only transforms the technology scenario, they contribute to change many strata of the society. And I think they go hand in hand. I cannot say what, which is cause and which is effect. And I remember one saying, you know, there was only one time God and human being met face to face and each exclaimed, you are my creation. And I just look back at this room. Why it brings out such a fantastic set of people, you know? And these people are made from very common stuff, like you and me, who are coming there. And these people, why they could bring up such a fantastic leadership qualities? You know, they have not grown to I am Ahmedabad, they have not grown to I am Calcutta, but still they are fantastic leaders. And I think that is only because we have to look at ISRO as an organization which took upon itself a goal which is much above the product. 
when Bikram Sarabhai founded ISRO in 1969, you know, he did not tell that they would make the heavy lift rockets, would make the precise satellites, would make a fine camera or fine radars. What he said will bring highest of technology to solve the commonest of the problems of the commonest of the people. And for that, whatever it takes for the technology, we have to do it. And this particular goal, you know, what he set forth it, that inspires people to make ocean color monitor, not to see the color of the ocean, to just to help fishermen to get an idea of the where you can get a school of fish in the vast oceans. And you will see that the leadership in ISRO, you know, they have been culled from actually very middle class milieu and the lower middle class milieu and from selected from all over that India, you know, from far off places. You know, and they, some of the country that notion has gone, you know, very deep inside us, you know, that if only five, six great institutions only make fantastic students. And it has also been inculcated by us, by our parents, by teachers, you know. You get yourself educated in India, but make your mark globally. And uh, I remember that uh, one story by Syed Mustafa Ali, you know, the Bengali uh, uh, author, he once humorously mentioned in 1960s, you know, he went to a Bengal village, a far off village, and he found all the able bodied persons, you know, climbing up the coconut trees and staying there. He asked, What happened to our able bodied people? Then somebody is told, You see, there is a rumor in the village that uh, Americans are coming to catch monkeys. <laughs> you know, that is, and in this situations when you get leaders coming to ISRO uh, students and making a mark for themselves from variety of background and variety of economic and education background, it just tells me that uh, to convert them to a future leaders you need actually inspiring leaders. If you get a very good students, very high IQ and very good background, you, what you essentially need in HR managers, you don't need inspiring leaders. But in ISRO, you will come across a set of inspiring leaders who actually transform these common people, students to a, a very, very successful space technologist as, as well as the contributor to many fields of science and many fields of life and one th and you see that uh, when we speak of people you know we when you have to do a job you need talent you know the talent is needed when you start the work talent is needed when you design a new thing but if you have to make maintain it you need oh, an attitude you know a talent can make the first satellite, talent can make second satellite, but the talent cannot make 50 satellites on a row which is successful. Tal talent can make one PSLB rocket launcher, first one, second one, third one. To make 30 launchers working flawlessly and injecting satellites with a 5 kilometer precision, you need attitude. Attitude is one which takes you to status, uh, from stratosphere to Mars, up to that length you can go. And many of the leadership's qualities, you know, is described in management terms, you know, lots of, lots of things are written, you know, but uh, when you, but uh, to me that the best definition of leadership is actually given by a saint, Swami Vivekananda, almost more than a century before. He told, take risk in life, and if you win, you can lead, and if you lose, you can guide. And that is precisely happens, you know, in 
many of the people ask me that uh, why Indian students are not innovative in India, but they go out, they succeed so well uh, abroad and all. I say that uh, in Indian students, the innovation is killed by parents you know, who tell them dress this way, eat in right hand, eat with the right hand, write with the right hand, don't speak this language, don't do this. The next set of people who kill innovation, you know, the teachers, you know, they come, they put an idea on you. No, you have to read history only in this particular way. You have to read our ancient literatures only in a particular way. If you tell a stu the students should answer, the Himalaya is only the residing at the north of India. But if you say the Himalaya is the south of Tibet, no, no, the answer is wrong. <laughs> that is what they teach you. Next of the boss, you know, that uh, when you join, when you start doing your job, you know, the first boss is the first killer, I have seen, of innovativeness. He tells you, why you try a new thing, do something, what we have been doing for so ages, and take risk and unnecessary problems will be there. So don't do that. Just continue what we have been doing for the last 10 years. And this is where you see that the Indian's uh, innovation goes out of the window. It is because we do not inculcate the uh, risk-taking spirit. I I'll say that uh, when you sent uh, uh, a spacecraft to Mars, you know, to inject it, you know what accuracy is needed? It is the accuracy needed that if you walk around the Earth's equator and circumvent it, come back to the same position with one inch accuracy, that sort of accuracy is needed. You see, you start walk 10 feet and come back, you will not come back with the one feet accuracy in the same position. <laughs> but that is the type of accuracy needed. When you built RISAT 1, you know, which I was personally involved, you know, actually, you know, many of you do not know, but that's a it's a, a radar with a 314 computers on board, they're working unisonally. There are 1,500 transmitters which are working there. And this is, this is one of the most complex electronics you build. And you, you'll see that uh, it takes enormous amount of risk to do this, you know, because in our country, you know, we do not take risks so easily. We take this so easily. And another, my observation of ISRO is that, you know, we do things in a very simple way. I'll tell you the rocket science is not rocket science. It is actually a simple science, you know, that uh, you, you would have seen, you know, a scooter engine runs at what speed? It's a 300 RPM. Your car engine runs at what speed? It's around 1000 to 2000 RPM. And your jet engine runs at what speed? It runs at a speed of approximately 8,000 RPM. And a rocket engine runs at what speed? You know, it's a 40,000 plus RPM. And to, we run it, you know, we use actually steam engine principle, which has come to India with the British Airs, with the Lord Clive. You know, it is that primitive technology we use to make it work. And You'll see that a, in your house, you know, that a dish TV connections and all or DTH connections are there, that 0.6 meter antenna, you put that, you know, it looks like a tower. <laughs> you know, and it is so simple, so easily you do that. But the technology behind it is very complex. But we do not make you feel that it doesn't need a rocket science to get a television program in your house. And another you know, they say another hallmark of ISRO is your quest for the truth. You know, that is science is actually all about questioning. Questioning the prevailing ideas. Questioning a, a, the present state of mind. If you do not question your present state of mind, you can never go to the future. And this questioning uh, characteristics, you know, is inculcated. In, in fact, if you see, if, you know, it shows any of the internal debates and all, you know, we debate very ferociously. 
Sometimes I tell you know that the bats are like a crocodile trying to eat a tortoise. <laughs> it is that sort of debate. None of both the parties are will not going to withdraw from this, and there is no clear cut winner. And if, if any of you as a movie buff, you know you would have watched. You know, you, I would advise you to watch Satyajit Ray's movie. Gopi Gain Balhavai, you know, the, there is a fantastic dance sequence, uh, shadow dance sequence by Uday Sankar. You know, that is a, a ghost from different religions who are arguing with each other. And such arguments, you know, you will see in Israel. People do very severe arguments, and this argument is actually broadens our horizon. It, it broadens our thought process. It stratifies our thought process properly, and but there is one difference from what we see in the democracy today. Once we decide on a way to go, we all march towards this argument, this path, with like an army jail. And. And the failing is a very difficult task in our country. You know, success success is very good thing. For you know, for very simple failing in academic exam, we take our own lives. That is our country. Even a Sachin Tendulkar scores seventy centuries, nobody bothers. But if he scores a single digit run, you know, the miles of headlines are printed in the newspapers. And in this, but. In this mental setup of the country, how does ISRO succeed? How does ISRO do it flawlessly one after another, so that you know we go on launching such a powerful rockets and satellites and all, but we do not get a front page. We get some inside some small one-inch space there, <laughs> and that is the credit to us. That is the credit we, that a, we are. Able to make success as a habit, and this is simply because, not because we aspire for success, we do not dread failure. And why we do not dread failure? Because what is, to your viewpoint, is failure, is actually is from our viewpoint in a lack of understanding from our side, and we have to clear it. And we, what you call failure. It is an actually process of learning to us, and in fact, in ISRO, we never fail. We actually learn, relearn, and learn it better. And you know that uh, many of these lot of will be joining for many uh, companies, you know, organizations and uh, industries, and all of this in future. And you will be told, you know, the big ideas should come from top. Only grandfather knows everything. <laughs> you know, and your father knows exactly what your future will be, and that is the problem in our country. That uh, everything has to be coming with a, you know, in a from top to bottom. But what we say that the ideas, you know, has no age limit. Ideas, source of ideas has no caste limit. Source of ideas has no intellectual limit. and the source of ideas has no financial